So I've tested out the Blink Mini and Blink Outdoor cameras for a while. And I just recently started testing out the Ring Indoor Cam second generation, but I haven't tried a camera from Eufy yet. So today we're checking out the Indoor Cam 2K Pan and Tilt Camera. This is model E220. This one's fairly affordable. I only paid $55 for this one, but I'll leave a link down below with current pricing and more information. They also have another camera that's very similar to this, except it doesn't pan and tilt. I believe the model is C120. I'll leave a link for that down below as well. As you can see, it's got 2K resolution. It's got human and pet AI detection. Also works with Apple HomeKit. Also works with voice assistants as well. 24 seven recording. This has cloud-based storage, or you can also use a micro SD card. That's at least a class 10. It's a maximum of 128 gigabytes of storage. You can also customize the activity zones. As far as the Wi-Fi connection, this one is 2.4 gigahertz only. It's also compatible with Homebase 3 if you already have other Eufy security cameras. Inside the box, you've got your quick start guide and positioning card if you want to mount this. It seems like a pretty simple mount. It looks like you've also got a couple mounting screws and drywall plugs if you need them. Looks like it's using a micro USB to USB-A cable, and they also throw in a USB-A wall adapter as well. You've got some nice rubber feet here along the bottom. Feels like everything is plastic all the way around. It still feels like nice quality though. Here on the back, you've got your setup and where you plug in the power. On the front is your indicator light right below the logo. So you've got a speaker on each side. Nice thing is it sits quite a bit higher than the Blink Mini. Definitely gonna be closer to the Ring indoor cam second generation as far as height goes. Still fairly compact though as far as the size goes. I think you'll be able to put this just about anywhere you would need to. Once you're in the mobile app, pretty easy to just hit add device once the camera is plugged in. As you can see, they've got a lot of different products, but just go ahead and choose wired camera, then choose indoor cam, pan and tilt, then you can set up a new home space or just hit next. Make sure the camera is plugged in and then just hit next. And then go ahead and scan the QR code on the bottom of the camera. Go ahead and choose allow. Hold the sync button on the back for two seconds until you hear a beep. Then just go to settings and allow it to connect through Bluetooth. Then just go ahead and log into your Wi-Fi connection. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network, please wait. Setup was successful. Then it should just take a second before it completes. And then you can choose where it's gonna be located. I wanna use this in the office, so I'm gonna use customize and type in office. As far as the notification goes, you can do most efficient, full effect, or include thumbnail. I might try include thumbnail just to see how it goes. You can also do microphone and audio recording as well. Then you have the option of using the micro SD card or use cloud storage as well. Looks like it has a firmware update, so I'll go ahead and do that. Then just go ahead and hit finish once that's done. You have the option of putting this on a wall, on a ceiling, or you can just put it on a table or shelf. Now, if you tap up here at the top, it'll have the list of what your Eufy home is called and your devices. You can also do manage home and you can edit the nickname to be whatever you want. You can see down here is the office camera that we just set up. Once you tap on that, you'll see the live view. Then you have directional arrows where you can move it around. Hold on the microphone icon here to speak. You can do a screenshot, record, round look where it goes all the way around 360 degrees. You also have sound control on there as well. Up here in the corner is your settings. You've got your home base connection, motion and sound detection, and the pan tilt settings. You've got rotate speed from slow all the way up to fast. You can also calibrate it in here as well. Definitely an interesting feature they put on here, which is called pet command. If you turn that on, when a pet's detected in the activity zone, your camera's gonna talk out loud automatically and say something like stop. Then you've got several different things you can change from you have video settings, audio settings, notification, general, share device, and share your thoughts. You can also restart or remove the device as well. 
It does let you turn off the watermark if you need to. For night vision, you have the option of auto, or you can turn the infrared to be always on or always off. Three different settings for the streaming quality, low, medium, or high image quality. I think I'll just leave that on auto for now. You've got two different options for recording quality. It's only 1080p resolution for cloud storage once you put in the micro SD card. Then you have the option of 2K resolution. You can see there's a slot there down towards the bottom underneath where the camera lens is. Once you put the SD card in, you can see there's a notification. If you tap on that, you can go ahead and hit format. Keep in mind it can only go up to 128 gigabytes of storage. I actually tested one that's higher than that and yeah, it doesn't work. You'll know the SD card works when you see this pop up and then just hit confirm. Then you should get a notification about the card being formatted. Then just say got it. You'll also notice there's three little dots here down in the corner where you can snooze the camera alerts up to 12 hours. You can just go right into the settings. Then you'll notice when you go back into recording quality, you now have the option of 2K resolution since we have the micro SD card in there. You also have the option of continuous recording so that it records everything. I believe once the card fills up, it just kind of writes over the previous recordings. It looks like you would get about 12 days of recording with the 128 gigabyte card. You can also adjust speaker volume, audio recording, and microphone. You'll see under notification, you've got human, pet, crying, all sound, and then all other motion as well. Under general, you can also change the name and turn off the status LED light on the front of the camera as well. You'll notice the field of view on this camera is pretty wide at 125 degrees. You'll also notice while you're inside the app holding your phone vertical, it's pretty simple to use the directional arrows to move the camera back and forth or up and down. It's also nice you can set the camera to do auto tracking, which is nice. I don't believe you can do that with the Blink Mini that's on the pan and tilt base. But here's what the Ring Indoor Cam 2nd Gen and Blink Mini looks like next to each other. Fairly similar in resolution, but a lot wider angle for the Ring camera. Now you'll see the Eufy Indoor Cam on the right, which is a nice wide angle, more than Blink, but not quite as much as the Ring Indoor Camera. It also looks a lot more clear because of the higher resolution, especially when you zoom in on objects. Here you can see Eufy on the left versus Blink on the right. Again, wider angle for Eufy and better resolution versus ring and blink, especially when you zoom in, you'll notice the text is a little bit clearer on the Eufy indoor cam. One advantage with ring is that it has color at night versus only using infrared, which is gonna make it black and white for Eufy and the Blink Mini. Although sort of personal preference here because Eufy still looks a little bit better even at night because of the higher resolution. But just after my short time with the Eufy indoor cam, it was pretty obvious that it just looks like better quality than both the Blink Mini and the Ring Indoor Cam at both during the day and nighttime with all lights turned off. For some reason though, I wasn't getting notifications when I set the Eufy camera to thumbnails, so I switched back to just text notifications and then it seemed to work fine. I'll have to switch it back and keep an eye on it to see how it works, but so far I definitely like what I'm seeing with Eufy. I might even get another one or two to set in windows looking outside. It's not that the Blink and Ring cameras are horrible or anything. They actually seem like they have pretty good value. It's just once you start using the Eufy camera, you just see a lot better detail. Although now I'm curious to see how this compares to a couple other indoor cameras that have 2K resolution to see which one is better.